In this the hearing conference will now be recorded. recording started. Okay, good. So we started recording. And please, if you have personal questions, uh, try to formulate them in more general form so we could they could be interesting for everyone. And if you have a really personal situation you urgently need to discuss, contact us uh, in TAF. We will uh, we give a free consultation on all topics around the getting job in Thuringia and in general in Germany. So let's uh, start. This is our three part job search skills, how to apply and application portfolio. I see people are joining us. You are welcome. And I will start with the first part, job search skills. As I said already, I um, am Anastasia and I'm uh, myself from Belarus. By the way, I know uh, we are now from diff participating from different countries. Please write us in the chat from which country you are taking part, where you are now. I myself, now, uh, I'm now in Erfurt. I'm coming from Belarus, but I'm now in Erfurt. Oh, I don't know what's happening with my screen. Ruben, I guess it's because you're taking control. So please <laughs> leave the moderator at my side so I can continue. So yeah, as I said, I'm from Belarus and I'm seeing there are several chat messages. Erfurt, Erfurt, Venezuela, but from Erfurt. So you can write here. It looks like we are majority of us are still from Germany, but Colombia, Egypt. Oh, welcome. Yeah, we st still not only German participants, but a lot of international guests, let's say. We know that Willy Brandt School is quite international. So, um, as I said, I'm working now together with Ruben in Turingian Agency um, for Skilled Workers Marketing. We call it like this. Uh, TAF is basically making marketing for Turingia. So it means we consult and advise companies how to hire from abroad and we're helping uh, migrants, but also Germans, how to move to Turingia or come back to Turingia from different federal states and also how to settle down um, here in Turingia, uh, everything uh, around labor market here. So um, me, myself, I got this job uh, from January 20, uh, 20, from beginning of this year. And now I can say that it's um, almost my dream job or even my dream job. But it took me five years after graduation from Willy Brandt School to come here. My first proper job I got uh, in Germany, I got uh, after seven, eight months after graduation, after seven months of search. So it would be relevant for our topic today. We would like to start with you from the short survey. I will now switch off the drawing tool highlighter and ask you to check yes or no in the boxes to respond on the question you see on the screen. You can draw right on the screen like this. I hope you can do it right now. Yes, now you should be. Does it work? I see by some participants it work. But if not, guys, just try to reply to yourself. Uh, I will read it loud. Do you rely mostly on online job boards you don't know exactly where when you applied yeah i see you can draw exactly have you applied for more than one job at the same company institution simultaneously yeah i see there are new answers are coming right majority of us just pick their Yes, I guess, yeah. Okay, so. Uh, 
How many of you ticked yes more than twice? I have seen some of us, that's definitely. I will just do a normal tool and then write it again. Uh, okay, it doesn't work. The rise of drawing, okay. So if you ticked yes more than twice, it means you basically um, make the most common mistakes when applying. You are selling you short. And the good news are we can uh, today discuss the strategies and concrete steps, how to change your strategy to a positive one, how to avoid the mistake you see at the moment on the screen. So how to find your own focus and strategy to have a good search, a job search plan and sending out resumes you're proud of. Let's start with the first step. For this, you need to take a step back and really think about and find out what do you want? What do you expect from job? Research it. Take as much time as you took for master thesis. If you're still writing, are you still writing your master thesis? Can you share it with us? Or you are planning to do, maybe write in the chat already done or still planning my topic or already finished so we can get impression from which uh, year you are now. So I see the answers all done. Congratulations, next year, writing. So in case you're writing your master thesis now, check where the, your experts you refer to are coming from, where do they work? Identify companies, organizations, research institutions that may be hiring in the field. Focus on your job search, focus your job search on employers that share your values. Understand how you can apply your skills in a new field. What is MPP for you? What is your dream field in this work? Uh, in, vice versa, what is your dream work in this field? Or maybe you're more interested in the field you have studied your bachelor. Uh, could you please quickly share with us which bachelor backgrounds you have? Because it's also a good opportunity to search how to combine it with your master of public policy. I know this question seems to be trivial, but without this analysis, you run the risk to apply to random opportunities and jobs that don't live up to your expectations, don't match your self-knowledge and will probably not be satisfying. And believe me, they will not call you for an interview. You have also to ask yourself, what can I do in terms of visa, salary, time, language, citizenship, personal situation? other aspects it's all important for you to think about as a candidate ask yourself what you have to do yes sometimes it is necessary to find a job that pays a bill before i got my full-time job in april 2016 so uh, almost a year after i start looking i have worked as a waitress a german teacher project assistant in a youth ngo war i helped um, for money for PhD students to type, to transcribe their interviews of field research. Do you think it was my dream job? Never ever, but I kept applying. Think about this, uh, uh, consider these jobs as a bridge. Uh, and also during these jobs, it is possible to learn qualification and gain skills necessary to find a better job. Talking about skills, we have prepared for you the top uh, hard and soft skills, not we, but a skill a LinkedIn already uh, did it for us. So here you see the top 20 of hard skills and soft skills. If we look closer, you will see the majority of them are IT or digital skills. But for instance, number three, analytical reasoning, and number four, people management, you can also gain during the MPP study. Good news are uh, that uh, soft skills, the entire list of soft skills, you exactly 
study the uh, or you can gain or you learn how to gain during the MPP study. Okay, step two. Um, know your possibilities. If we are talking about where you want to stay, where you want to work, of course, as a tough worker, as a person living here, I advertise for Turingen, Turingia. Turingia has a lot to offer, but there are a lot of limitations for candidates without really good German. Uh, in Turingia, we have a lot of small and medium enterprises, but if we are talking about um, uh, non-for-profit jobs, you still have several opportunities. Of course, German language is a precondition. For instance, you can work here in political sphere in the local parliament as assistant or researcher. You can work in this field of uh, European affair, affairs. Uh, there are several European parliament members working in, in Turingia. There are several international or local NGOs, uh, even foundations, limited amount, but still. There are social and migration related organizations, international companies, uh, it's for-profit companies, uh, but uh, still very interesting jobs. Maybe your background have been economics. I see there are some participants with economics, urban planning, so it could be also interesting um, companies which are settled down here. If you're really interested to focus your job search on Turingia, you can refer to Turingen Stellenbörse. It's uh, the job board we offer. We will send you all links and all um, presentations, mat presentation materials after this webinar. For sure, you don't need now to write them down, but still you can make a print screen uh screenshot if you want uh, we also have in a, a, a database with uh, all clusters and cluster management i just put here the companies the clusters of companies you can find in Turingia. they are in germans for you to practice your german and if you're really interested we can uh, make an appointment and connect to you uh, to a person who could maybe give you more information for instance like uh, regional business development department or others so just discover your possibilities in Turingia as well step two possibilities in Germany Biggest challenge in Turingia, but in Germany as well, is the German language. I know you maybe are already tired to hear this again and again, but it's true. In our field, language plays a very important role. Even in the big organizations in Bonn, Berlin, Frankfurt, German could be additional working language. In general, German really opens a lot of doors labor market in Germany. I would like to share um, three more important aspects uh, of the labor market in Germany with you. So the first one, your previous experience from your home countries is not always recognized in Germany. Maybe you have already um, mentioned this, applying for internships or applying for um, positions. Very well known organization, universities in your country where you most probably worked before could mean nothing to the German employer. That's a fact. Just be ready for that. And sometimes it seems really like you are starting from zero from the very beginning, but it's not true. You already have your experience just to uh, remember that and try to sell you to, rep to present yourself accordingly. Point two, access to the labor market could take from six months up to three years, both for Germans and, non, uh, and for non-country nationals. This is uh, the um, aspect of a German market, labor market, and this is reality. So do not have too high expectations and try to find sometimes such a 
jobs to bridge the uh, time between um, neighbor jobs, so called uh, mini job, until you got a proper position. Just be realistic. I want to be uh, uh, to say that it would be your case, but it could be possible. And point three, German professions in majority of cases have quite narrow specializations. It means for people with generalistic professions like we, scientists, social scientists, it takes more efforts to find a job, but it's still possible. That's why I do recommend to think about your focus and your specialization as soon as possible, especially for those who are still studying Try to select your subject that way that you can write your papers, get your internship, choose your project group and write your master thesis in the same field of research for the same topic. If you already finished your master program and master thesis, decide what is MPP for you. You had uh, several specializations, uh, area of interest, your major subjects. Make a word maps for UK words in German and other languages if you are searching in other countries. What MPP could be? For instance, in Germany they always say öffentliche Verwaltung oder öffentliche Dienst, Politikwissenschaft, Sozialwissenschaft, uh, project management, European project management. I have seen such uh, professions like country specialist for for instance, for Eastern Europe, for Asian countries, it could be also profession or the position name, uh, berater, referent, consultant, advisor, project uh, manager, or project mitarbeiter. So it's really different uh, search words. It's sometimes it's social management. So really try to identify what could be your uh, point of interest. If you had a, a conflict study, then make a word map of your from your field. So and try, uh, of course, if you're applying in EU and or non-EU countries, other countries, then translate it all in your languages or um, in languages used in these countries. For other countries, I uh, didn't highlight these two topics because our um, discussion is mostly about Germany and Thuringia. For other countries, you can now already, uh, if you are still studying, uh, try different uh, participatory possibilities. Uh, we call it like this, conferences, seminars, training, summer, winter school. Of course, nowadays, maybe it's not the case, not so easy to participate, but you can always do it virtual. Internship. In the actual time, it could be remote internships, applications for EU positions for international NGOs or other international institutions, European institutions, or etc., could take quite a lot of time, sometimes from one year till two. So use the time now. And I know it sounds really um, simple or sometimes not so. Uh, convincing, but a lot of my friends who uh, finished Willy Brandt school also, or other program, master program, they started from trainee positions. So um, for European institution or international NGOs, it also could be a chance. Junior positions, trainee programs, participate in different activities to get the recommendations. And of course, to when we are talking about going back home, it's only your decision. In your home country, you could be an expert with a European uh, background, academic background and expertise. If you, uh, we are talking about strategy, uh, step three, um, there, are, there could be different possibilities. Do not rely only on one source of information or on one job board. Have a list of search words, as I said already, list of the sources connected to your profession, to your area um, of study, foundation, political groups, organization, European institution, international NGOs, 
there are a lot of specialized job boards. Some of them you will see on the next slide, but as I said already, we will uh, send to you a list um, through the Billy Brand School, um, uh, the list of sources which we know. Um, I also put here Corona strategies because we uh, have now this new for us time. I would not say it's a crisis time, it's time for change. Um, I don't want to talk a lot about this. We can discuss it in discussion part. From our experience, a lot of companies are still hiring, but maybe a bit less and in different digital formats. Uh, Ruben will talk more about this, how to apply, how to use um, application and digital platforms for this. As I said, do not use only one job board, uh, job search engine. Tough uh, um, for local search into VNJ have its own. I do recommend to use job board of the Federal Employment Agency, Agentur für Arbeit. With the proper keywords, you can always find here a lot of jobs all over the Germany, even in our field. Of course, if it wouldn't to be called public policy officer, but if you play with the words, with the keywords, you will definitely find a good one. There are also specific job search engines like Apo Jobs, English Jobs, Stepstone, Uni Jobs, and so on, UN Jobs, and so on. So all links you will receive, don't worry. Job fairs. It's, um, this tool seems to be under estimate by foreign uh, students or foreign um, graduates. Myself, I do recommend it. I participated in several Turingian um, uh, fairs like academics, and I've been to several in Berlin, international job um, fair. Uh, and I even got to uh, interviews afterwards. It took me six months. It, the job or, uh, or interview uh, invitation came six months later. It means you have to be patient and good prepared, but uh, it works in my opinion. We can also send you a link of uh, job fairs uh, known to us. And I know Willy Brandt School also give you some advices. Social networks, of course, you're a digital native and uh, we don't need to uh, teach you how to do this. Just make sure you are you have really good professional online presence when it comes to LinkedIn and Xing. Um, and be sure your present your presentation of yourself online is uh, make a good impression. Because um, nowadays uh, a lot of HR um, managers really Google you. Other sources could be recruitment agencies or recruiters. It's also a good experience. Sometimes they don't give you a direct um, job opening or job description, but it's a good experience on of to train yourself how to apply, and it's a kind of mini interview. And use also universities in internal job boards. If your university doesn't offer this, there are a lot of bigger universities, Berlin, Hamburg, or even in other countries where you can always find a good, um, a good uh, job description, job offers. Internship and master thesis, uh, for those who are still studying, think about it, um, remote internship and maybe possibility to find a company with which you can write a master thesis, it, it's really a good possibility to get into labor market. Think strategically and take it serious. I personally, normally, uh, it takes me five hours to write a good application plus several days of research. You have to know that working in the field of public policy, uh, in a lot of cases, you will get uh, project-based jobs. It means with a limited duration of contract. 
For instance, me personally, I applied three times within four last four years, and tracking uh, helped me a lot. Once I had 40 applications, and I know people who had 120 and really tracked it. And from my 40, I got seven interviews and even three job offers. It's not to brag, it's just to show you um, how it could help you, how uh, the situation looks at the German market, labor market. Plan and organize your search uh, activity. And of course, uh, be serious about it. And to sum up, uh, all strategies, they always lead us to the company organization uh, or organization website. About 80% of German employers post their vacancies on their website, as we see from this picture. In the next part of our presentation, Ruben will tell us more detailed about um, how to apply, where to find the job opening on the website, and what is a German Bewerbung. Now we have time for questions, and uh, I will open the chat, but I see we don't have a lot of questions we will, you want to ask. So I hear, I see, I'm sorry, I see here the question about Corona time. So uh, we don't have at the moment any alternative to job fairs. Uh, Anastasia, there are sorry. Several... Anastasia, let me, let me yes, read the yes. question because there's people who, is, who, are, who are only with the phone here. So maybe they cannot see okay. the question. So Eva asks, given the new rules of distance in enclosed space after coronavirus, is there any alternative option to job fairs, at least in Thuringia? So uh, I already started to reply. I don't know any options in Thuringia. Now in TAF, we are digitalize a lot of our formats. They will, they will be for instance a networking um, a kind of a digital format webinar on 28th of april but it mostly for companies not for applicants i guess yeah the only what we have now job boards and ruben will take uh, we'll talk about unsolicited uh, so-called unsolicited uh, applications like initiative bewerbung it's called in germany yeah ruben yes I I can... um, we have another question here from jean and um, what is the level of german that is needed for most public policy jobs in germany so we say uh, as orientation, uh, job uh, German level B2. It's in majority of cases quite enough, especially if you will work in international organization or in NGO. There are still jobs where you can communicate only in English or your interview or HR manager could speak English, but uh, not all uh, your colleagues could speak English. So it uh, would be good to have at least B2 level. I see the question about Agentur für Arbeit. Do you recommend students to register for Agentur für Arbeit after they graduate? Basically, yes. Uh, I know um, you maybe have heard a lot of uh, negative experience about Agentur für Arbeit, Federal Employment Agency, but uh, time change and it depends on where you do it also. Uh, sometimes not every uh, employer of uh, employee of Agentur für Arbeit could speak proper English with you. So I recommend to have your friend or somebody who could translate for you. And uh, you could also get several support options from them. For instance, um, maybe German language courses or any digital courses nowadays. They offer a lot of uh, different um, 
indirect support, let's say. Basically, in majority of cases, they will lead, uh, they will inform you how to use um, job board of uh, Stellenbörse of Agentur für Arbeit, uh, but it also could be helpful. Uh, you do not gain a lot, but you do not lose in that sense anything. So I would still recommend it, especially if you are EU, uh, from EU country, it could bring you more than if you're a third country national, but also for third country nationals, I would suggest it. So it costs you a bit of time, but then it could help. So it not necessarily give you a hundred of job uh, description or job of, of openings uh, for public policy because it's still difficult topic difficult profession to generalistic also for employees of agentur für arbeit but still maybe some support you can gain did i miss any question because now the chat is moving I, so fast yes yeah um we are good with the time um, I have a small thing I want to say about the job center, the Arbeitssuchenden and all these things. Well, this question is very important for those who are finishing their master's degree, that they can always register as Arbeitssuchenden, that means they are looking for a job in the Arbeitsagentur. It means that you are um, inscribe as someone who is looking for a job. So you go to the to the Arbeitsign tour, you register yourself, you register your CV and so on. That doesn't mean that you are receive, you will receive money from the state. So it's always a good idea to register yourself in the Arbeitsign tour, but not in the job center if you are a third national country, because that means you um, you will have problems with the visa because they can pay you things that you are not um, you are not allowed to receive because you are a student with a non so with a non EU citizen student so you cannot receive help from the state. So if you have more questions about this, we are happy to um, help you with those things with so general information about that because. Those questions are really, really specific. So, Nasia, it's yours. Yeah, it's also a good um, uh, hint. Thank you, Ruben, to specify it because basic rule, a general rule is you as a student or you as a, um, a migrant never receive money from a German uh, government, German state in that sense, before you have worked at least one year in a social secure job, it means paying taxes in Germany. So in that sense, even the option to be registered as an Arbeitslos, it's uh, institution job center, uh, jobless is not an option for you. In German, uh, the only option is possible for you, it's Arbeitssuchend, it means in the job search, job searching person. And then I was talking about these support opportunities from Agentur für Arbeit. Basically, until you got your first contract and until you worked at least one year in Germany, you have no right to this support Arbeitslos. Uh, so it means jobless money, so-called social security money. Uh, non uh, EU members and uh, um, third countries, both of the, are, all of us, we cannot um, receive this financial support. See also there was a question about job interviews. Basically, it's really a, a big topic and we can even uh, help you with a concrete situation to get ready for a job interview and to write a proper cover letter. If you have a, a specific position description, I always forget how it's called exactly in English, job offer or um, 
job opening. So you can call us or write us email. It's supposed to be in the description of our webinar or at the end of this uh, webinar, we will also share our contacts. So such a specific personal uh, situation, we are ready to help and our services in TAF are free of charge. So we can even kind of uh, prepare questions for you for the job interview because today specifically is not the topic of our uh, webinar. Yeah, do we have any other questions? No, I think I don't see, yeah? Right, Ruben? Okay, so... Yeah, so, so there's another question about insurance and registering in, as Avex 200. Uh, I am really no, not sure about that. I have heard that some insurance companies ask for the people to register themselves as Arbeitsuchenden so they can have a student and um, so they don't have to pay, they have to pay lower uh, health insurance costs um, fees. But I am really not sure about that. And I think it's a really, that's something we can research and we can, um, we can. I we can, can answer this question because I okay. myself had such situation. Okay, perfect. Uh, I was registered right after Willy Brandt School, uh, after uh, graduation. I registered myself here in Thuringia as Arbeitssuchend. And I was the student of a 30. Uh, and this is a big difference because then you have to pay more in insurance costs. Your insurance rate increased almost double uh, if you are registered by public health insurance like AOCA, TK, and so on. So, and it, indeed, uh, this uh, paper, this, uh, we have to say, um, certificate from Agentur für Arbeit that I'm Arbeitssuchend, I have no job, uh, helped me to avoid two months, only two months of payments for of uh, insurance. So this is how, how it works. Uh, but in general, it's really not so easy to avoid um, health insurance fees. It's just two months of, how to say, of lower payment. That's all. Johanna, don't worry. We have a question in chat, so we read them. It functions quite well, I think. Yeah, I have now a question to my colleagues uh, and to Ruben, for instance. We wanted to have a short break, or maybe also to participants. Do we want to start this break or we go directly to a second input? What do you think? Coffee time, one minute. No need, I see one. So I suggest, because we are quite good on time, just skip one minute. We, we thought about one minute, so just maybe for somebody to take a breeze, breath, breeze. <laughs> it's not enough to smoke, but you can we hope you live a healthy life, especially right now. So just one minute to for a short break and then we start in in a few seconds. Okay. Thank you. 
So let me start with my presentation here. My name is Ruben Gonzalez. I am from Venezuela and I study in the Billy Brown with Nastia and we finished both in 2015. Uh, so yes, um, let's continue with this part of my presentation. So the goal of your application is to be invited for a job interview. But you still need to make sure your application corresponds. Hey, one moment, sorry. Nasia, the presentation is OK. Thank you. So again, I will start again. So um, how do I apply? That's my part here in the second model of our seminar today and the goal of your application is to be invited for a job interview that's the main goal but you still need to make sure your application corresponds to the position you are applying for that's extremely important there are several ways to apply and i will talk i will talk i will discuss them with you in my presentation if you are invited to a job interview, what uh, Ken was saying, exactly, you have to prepare very well for it. And the preparation of a job interview is a different, so it's a different thing that we will not talk today. We can, as my colleague told uh, Ken before, we can give you personal advice, or maybe you can make another seminar about this topic. But the first goal of applying is to get an interview. So the first way, the first option to, for an application is applying for a position without a job opening. And that in German is Initiative Bewerbung. It is quite normal and sometimes Sometimes it's effective, especially to find an internship or to find a master thesis or, or, to find, or find an organization where you can do your master thesis. And for that, you have to present your plans and tell the company why this organization, this company or employer, why this organization will benefit from your work. It is very logic that many organizations are not looking for interns or do not open um, positions in their web page because they are planning to do so. So if you send your initiative available, maybe you can get into a pool of persons that are interested for this company and you may get a call for a job interview. And as that's, can you change the, yes, the, the second option is the most common way to apply, of course, and um, we can talk about here about how, how it works. So the first thing that you have to, when you, when you go to, when you see a job advert, a job offer, you have to see the structure of it. So in the top, there, you can see they are looking for a researcher. That's the information of the position. In which organization? That's Bauhaus University in Weimar. And the conditions. Then underneath, you see the responsibilities, and underneath the requirements. 
as a general role, rule, sorry, if you can tick 80% of the boxes in terms of what the employer is asking for, Ah, sorry, uh, telling me there's a problem with the microphone. One, one moment, please. Is the microphone better now? Okay, sorry, do I start again? Okay, so let's start again. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So let's start again the presentation. So let's do a short summary of, of the presentation. And the goal of your application is to get call. And for that, there are so there are two ways to to apply or two positions to apply. The one the first way is to have uh, to apply for a position without a job opening. That's initiative bewerbung. Is very common and to find an internship or my, make a master thesis is even more, more common. But if you, the second option, of course, is this, is applying for position with a job opening, of course. Once, you've, you, once you have found a interesting job offer, Uh, you have to know how to decode it, so how to understand it. And of course, the first thing is that you have to understand what are they looking for, which which co companies are, with which company are you working, organization are you working for, the conditions, your responsibilities, and your and the things that you have to bring, the requirements. And as a general role rule, if you can tick 80% of the boxes in terms of what the employer is asking for then it's worth applying. A really good idea is to print out the, the job offer and go through it with a highlighter, picking out the keywords and phrases and use these phrases and keywords in the job application. Why? Because nowadays many companies use um, softwares that highlights such things. Also, the job description, the job offer, gives you a lot, gives you a lot of information about the company and the position. For example, they may write that that's a fast-paced job, and they're telling you that this job is really stressing. It really um, is for someone who who has to be high energy and good at working under pressure. If they ask for as for a particular skill, you have to be able to prove that you have it. And if you don't have it, if you cannot demonstrate all the skills required for the position, um, there's a possibility, or you can write in your CV, not in your CV, in your cover letter, saying that you have the potential to learn that, to learn that skill and you can use non-professional examples of your of your life to try to demonstrate this. It's really important not to apply to every um, job offer you see out there. You need to apply only for those offers who really, um, where you can really, really, really have a chance. And that is something that has to be more than 80% of the of the 
you 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 apply you can you comply with eighty percent of the requirements. One moment. Okay. A great way to to see this comparison is to compare and match your CV and your job offer. There are two things that you need to understand that are the must-haves and the nice-to-have. Must-have are things that you need to have to apply for the job, and nice-to-have are things that, as the name said, is okay to not not to have it, but it will be extra points. If you compare your if you compare your CV and the job offer, you can see if you have a match for that offer and then you can apply. So the second subject I want to I want to talk with you guys now is that nowadays the in Germany the trend is that mostly all companies are try are using forms the paper application and the email application is well the paper application is was almost a third in 2010 and now is only perhaps 10% of the applications but the forms are increasing and the and the um, and the forecast the forecasts is a deeply increase in the form in the forms and applic and the apps to apply for jobs. Therefore, we will I will only discuss here in this presentation about applying through an email and forms. So the application through email. So I would like for, before we start with this uh, slide, I would like to ask. Uh, for I repeat, so I, I could someone write on the chat a real, I repeat, a real email address which is really unprofessional, please? Okay, so that's the problem when you are applying with such emails. So if you have something that is really unprofessional, change it and so open a new account with your first and last name, period. Um, the other thing is that when you are writing an email, and sending your your application you can write in the subject line the job so the job you are applying for and maybe the, the position the, the job offer number sometimes the companies need those numbers to sort the applications also um when you are writing the text in the email is so you 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 need to send so the text in the email is not the cover letter. The cover letter is an extra document inside, it's attachment, it's an attachment in the document in Germany. So you have to write the text of the cover letter in the text of the email. Um, I have a question for you all. Please answer in the, in the chat uh, with a plus or a minus. It is okay to apply for a job using your university email. Okay, so there's a lot of minus. It's a, it's a surprise.
So um, the advantage so the positive aspects is that uh, it will be useful to find an internship or a master thesis um, internship or job or to apply to uh, in academia because it maybe gives you a good impression or the, and is more reliable but nevertheless and a b say it the problem is that those accounts expire after graduation also not everyone has access to them or check them regularly it didn't and the storage limit is sometimes quite small so to be sure my my recommendation is use two emails so if your email from if your university email doesn't work then the company can contact you through your personal professional email um, so when you're applying and this goes to all sorts of uh, um always to apply so it doesn't matter if an email or a form or a paper application you have to watch for grammar and that grammar there is on purpose has not is not good um it's not good um, ask a friend or colleague who is native speaker in in the really run is really nice because you have all sorts of languages to recheck your application don't be shy especially if you are applying um to a german to a german company or you are writing your um your application in german also a second viewer can detect mistakes even if you don't mas if you master that language so it can happen obviously follow the company rules when you are applying if they ask for multiple documents um in one or two or three so or in only one document or if they ask for pdfs or so you have to follow the rules why because they have they are receiving a lot of applications and sometimes their security systems so the, the computer systems don't accept big files or don't accept sort um types of documents are not um, the common ones so you have to follow the rules you are the one who is applying and when you are writing the file name file name of your cv please if you write in your cv bosch this company this big company the comp so the other employer will know that you are applying to other employers of course they know that you are applying to other employers but you always have to maintain a certain professionality in the, in the application. Uh, it's okay. Is the microphone going? Is everything okay with the microphone? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So the last example, the green ones, is the the best way to apply, the best way to use your CV because employers can easily find your, find your application and they can classify all the, all the applications. I want to change here the slide. Yeah, okay. So online applications. Um, I personally do not like this way of to, to apply because I find it very unpersonal and i am perhaps old school but as we saw before all companies are using them everyone from gitz to un to bosch to big ones so everyone is using it and the reason is that the reason is that all big companies 
um, yeah, sorry, because with uh, with this form of application, employers can gather consistent data about the applicants. So for them, it's really, really easy to sort everything that applicants are sending. My tip of this type of applications is to copy all your general information from your first forms so you can reuse it for other applications. But of course, you have to change all things regarding, so all these specific things regarding to each job because as you, as you will figure out afterwards, for each job, you have to write a new cover letter or you have to change your cover letter to adapt to that job. That's really, really, really important. Um, and as a last thing, I would like to talk about this new way of application via an app. And is in the end is the is a friendly version of smartphones. It's a uh, it's a form application that is done that is created for smartphones. Um, I have here a question: Had someone apply with application apps? Because um, I think it's, they are more common with with IT and services branches, but in social science and MPP work and, and so it's once okay Anastasia maybe you can give us your 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 impressions I, I would so because all of you already answered here I think it's not it doesn't make any sense to go to TETME to make the survey so I think it's it's clear that that we don't need to have this tet me today. Yes, it may be the future, of course. It's maybe it's a really nice way to apply from your sofa with your cell phone, but it's very too early to know what will happen with um, app application apps. Um, I think we are really good with the time, um, Anastasia, right? Okay, so um, let's go to the que your questions, please, and write us here in the chat. If there's no questions, so there's an there's an there's a third way. There's a third module that we will discuss. So don't go away. If there if there are no questions, we can we have a an emergency activity for us. But let's wait one minute for more questions. If there are not questions, we can make this emergency activity, Anastasia. Let's do the activity. Okay, so I will I will send you guys in the chat a document where you can write some information to understand what are you looking for and what are your challenges and such things. And in the bottom of this activity, we can write some recommendations and we can do it all together. Let's see how it works. One moment, please.
So follow the link, please. And Anastasia, can you share your your um, the document here in the in the main? Um, um, what is the name of that? I have no idea. So can you share the document with the with the screen? Yes, in the main screen, please. Just a second. Um, oh, yes. All of them are there. Nice. But well, we cannot see it right now, right? Just if you second. follow the link, you can see it. Screen share. So in this, in this, in this document, please, on the right side, you can write your name or only your initials. If you don't, if you, if you only want to, to write your initials. Exactly. Perfect. So basically, so, this tool is to show uh, that you do not start from the very beginning. You have already your own experience, and you have to base your new experience of applications on this previous experience. Don't think it's not important at all. So let's say here for what? Um, seven minutes, Anastasia, and then we follow. We continue with the with the presentation. No, my suggestion is two, three minutes, and then we can save the document for um, a discussion. Seven minutes, it will be too long, to, in my opinion. And yes. we have already 3.10, so basically, officially, at uh, 3.30, we want to finish the webinar. So okay. Just one, two minutes, uh, guys, to They are writing a lot. Experience. It's really nice. <laughs> I see Ruben like a lot, likes a lot interactive tools. I guess you also enjoy it in your study now because we have uh, you all have now remote uh, or digital webinars and study we hope your professors also use a lot of interactive tools We see a question now, so far you're writing, I will read the question from, uh, uh, so how far do you evaluate the follow-up emails? So I have heard different opinion about follow-up emails, but my personal opinion is that it's quite good to ask afterwards why you refuse to my email or to my application, why you got rejection. And there are some HRs who even find the time and really reply to you. So um, in our um, consultations, in my consultation, for instance, I do recommend to do it, especially if you track your actions and you have um, sent 40 
let's say, or 50 or even 100 of um, emails already of applications, and you think they were quite good of, for quality, but you still didn't receive any reply or only rejections. If you have no reply, it could be also a sign for you to rethink your strategy to really, as Ruben said, to ask to your to ask uh, your friend, neighbor, um, professor, former professor, or employee of staff of our organization, three of us, Johanna, Ruben, and me, we uh, are ready to share with you our experience and really review your cover letters as well. So um, then you really have to ask your company, especially if you got rejected, it's not forbidden, let's say. And it could be a plus for you in the sense you lose nothing. If they have time, HR has time, they could reply, respond to you. If not, then not. So I think it's a good idea to to send a follow-up email, so-called. Uh, it's also a good idea to send emails um, uh, if you didn't get any reply for, let's say, two, three weeks. In German, it's called Stand der Bewerbung, so-called uh, and how you would translate it. So to ask, did my application, application reach to you at all? Um, do you need time to consider? Maybe you have already made your decision. So it must be politely formulated email. And then you it can always ask afterwards. What they do not recommend uh, to call and ask or to call before you apply, just to make an impression. Because normally all HRs we worked with, they told us they do not remember the name. And of course they do not, um, they cannot connect your call to your application. So just to call to make impression, or if you call in afterwards to ask about your application, uh, it's difficult for them because they need to, uh, they are out of their routine job by your call and then they have to find you in the database. So basically if you have any questions before or after, you better write email. That's a general recommendation from my side. I guess we have a lot of interesting um, experience already in our document and we can, and you guys uh, can share it and use it afterwards. Um, yeah, thank you very much uh, also for your participation, but we still have a uh, third part of our presentation about CV, about um, application documents. So I suggest, Ruben, we go, we continue. It's like 20 minutes left. Stay tuned. Don't fall asleep. <laughs> uh. So can you please change to the to the presentation, Nasia? So thank you very much for your participation and the in our document. No, I have to search my presentation here. Okay, so welcome back to our third and last module, and it's the German application standard. Um, it's quite different to apply here and in your home country. That's the first thing I can tell you. In this part, you will get an overview of application standards in Germany and learn how to structure both cover letter and CV. Remember, the first impression counts. Make sure you use the chance to clearly show what you have to offer and your potential. potential sorry. Um, when you are applying in Germany, you have to send a lot of documents. You have to send a cover letter, you have to send a CV. That's maybe the, the, the two documents you have to send all over the world. 
but in Germany you have to send also copies or reference certif and certificates. And it's very, it's very funny because when you start applying here, you figure out that you have to send sometimes even the school even certificates, even though you have a master's degree, even though you have a bachelor's degree. But there are companies, they ask sometimes for the school leaving certificates. Also, if you're applying um, to a German normal work, you have to send your language certificates, your German language certificates. And if you have a, if you have worked already, it is really nice to send some um, work certificates. And what is extremely strange in the um, German standard is the picture. So uh, uh, you have to send a picture of yourself with your CV. In, in there are countries that is illegal, where is that where that is completely illegal. But in Germany, if you don't do it, you are in disadvantage with other candidates who are sending their pictures. Um, and it has to be a really good professional picture. So you, you have to go to a photo studio or you have to ask for a friend who has a good camera and can advise you how to... So it's, it's really an important thing here in Germany. So a classic portfolio, a classic um, application in Germany is a cover letter with a cover page with your picture and personal details, two page CV, an index, and then all the documents that I told you for master's degree, grades, bachelor's degree, at maybe translations, language degrees, work certificates. There are companies um, who ask for the visa because they need to know if you can work here or not. Uh, there are companies who work for the school even certificate um, and so on. Uh, and sometimes it's really amazing the, the documents they ask for. Regarding to the cover letter, is perhaps the most important document. This will, the cover letter and your CV are the most important documents which you are sending. And the cover letter is the bridge between the CV and, your, and the job offer. It allows you to personalize the application and highlight key areas of your CV in more depth. Also, you, more, you must explain large gaps of your CV. For example, you are learning German or you were suffering from a medical condition or you got a kit. So this, the cover letter is the place where you explain that. You have to always send a cover letter and always adapt your letter to the job description. That is perhaps the most important thing that you have to take from this seminar. Always send a cover letter and always adapt it to the job description you are targeting. Human resource will probably not um, review a application without a cover letter. In this cover letter, you have to convince, stand out, and have enough information to make them want to hear the rest of your story in the interview. So the goal of your cover letter and your application is to get invited to a job interview. So this is a classical um, cover letter. And here, I don't know if you can see it um, well enough. Um, it's always the first part of your application portfolio. You address, so you, you write your name, your address, your contact data, and then the name of the, of the, per, of the company. And always a subject 
the, the, the position where you're applying for. After you write the name of the person who is who wrote the job offer, or maybe if the the, the boss of the department or where you were you will like to work with. After that, you use a regular structure, introduction, body, ending, and then the formal things. It's important to sign your cover letter. It sounds really strange, but you have to, because that gives you a really good impression to the job, uh, to the employers. One thing you can do is to scan your, your signature and put it to the document, or print your document, sign it, and scan it again. It has to be one page um, from 250 to 300 words. And here you have to stress how your skills, education, experience can benefit the employer. In the end, you have always, you have always to talk about the company and how the company will benefit if you, if you can share your, your skills, education, and experience. One moment. Yes. Okay. You have to make it, you have to make the cover letter about them and not about you. And demonstrate how your skills match the specific requirements for the job description. And what other skills do you have that may interest your employer? You don't have to repeat your CV. That's really important. Don't repeat your CV. And another really good tip is you have to speak their language. If you're applying to the UN, if you're applying to the GIZ, if you're applying to a small company, you don't use the same language. Why? Because they, each of them use different languages. Technical language, I mean. Um, if you if you have to really search in the job in the job offer those technical words and and understand them because it's a key issue when you are applying it's, it's really a key issue when you are applying because then the employer will understand that you are able to 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 manage or to to work with them Remember, not all applications are the same. Companies and applicants are quite different. Each one are, is completely different. And you have to aim and you have to customize each applications to each company or organization. Please don't, don't make this type of mistakes. In this, so this this example is someone who applied for a company in Hamburg, the Olympus a medical company, and he wrote in the cover letter that he would like to work in Airbus. Those are small details, maybe take so they are very small. It can happen to anyone, but that gives a really bad impression. A really first bad impression a really first <laughs> what how, how can i say it? a really first a really bad first impression thank you so what is important is to write in the application in the cover letter when are you available if you are applying for an internship how long are you available? Uh, if it's compulsory or voluntary, um, or if you are working, when when is your your contract ending and you can apply, you can start the next work? It's also important for many companies to plan their work plan, 
and your salary if it's applicable. It's, so it's that's a really complicated question, but some people like to write their salary aspirations on the um, application. And now my colleague Anastasia will continue with our presentation. Your mic, your microphone, Anastasia. Thank you, Ruben. We just have a few more minutes left, and I will just show you examples. So don't worry, it's not an, another presentation for an hour. So as Ruben said, remember your focus, um, focus on your purpose of the, uh, while writing CV or cover letter, you just need to go uh, to get an interview, not a job. It means in your interview, in your CV, you also should not uh, tell uh, or describe your life experience. Just focus on the re relevant experience for this specific job. Project publications, concrete dis description of the events or any other really interesting and long experience belong to the cover letter. Uh, here I uh, have some examples for you of CVs, how they could look. And Johanna just wrote uh, in chat the link. All these samples you can find in, on our top website or you can Google, there are so many different forms of applications, some are with cover letter, cover page, some without. But the most important you see, there are different layouts, but the traditional German standard way of applying is a tabular form. It means it must be a table. From left side, you see time frame. From right side, with a really strict columns, right? And from the right side, you see the description corresponding to the time frame. It, we recommend to have at maximum two pages. Nobody will read more than two pages. And cheating is not an option. If you use reduced margins, size, nine, font, professional HR immediately recognizes and it doesn't look good and professional. Content-wise, what you should have on your, in your CV. It must be up-to-date. Don't use the CV three years, which you wrote three years ago. I do recommend reverse chronological order. And of course, it must be structured in the blocks. For instance, block, uh, block um, private personal information. Check your CV for the following. Surname and name. We do recommend for the foreign names or migrant names like us to separate it, to identify surname and name because HR or employer, they not necessarily know our foreign name. They're not used to it. Um, you can give here nationality or alternatively place of birth, or you can indicate also resident status. But don't write a, a student visa or similar. You better write um, working permit, limited, unlimited, or if you don't know how to write it exactly, you can consult, ad, uh, search for our advice. As Ruben said already, business like photo, it's really important, unfortunately, it's really important in Germany. Or alternatively, you could have a cover page, title page, uh, with the photo on it and your contact information. All other personal information goes uh, to the first page of CV. This is also an example of the structure. And for instance, the structure of the section education. We don't recommend to put your grade uh, point average GPA because it's not relevant for the companies as well as uh, your transcript is not interesting. Further information, you always can include language and computer skills and maybe any interesting uh, skills, soft skills, or hard skills, if you got any trainer training and you have certificates for it. All other information, personal information, like voluntary, military service, hobby, leisure, personal interest, it could be interesting, but not necessarily relevant. Pay attention what is written on the job 
description and really follow the rules of the job uh, description. And um, conclusion about the CV is really um, double check. Uh, it, you have only five seconds to make a good impression with your CV. And your CV must uh, uh, have so-called 3C. Clear, must be uh, clear, concise, confident. So fall, uh, easy to follow, convincing, use short sentences and concentrate on relevant and aspects which are asked. Do not write your entire life experience, as I said. And of course, for Germany, it's also important for CV and for cover letter to have a signature and a date and the end. And um, it, it could also include appendix amendments if asked. But also, I say no to educational transcripts. They are too long and they are never interesting, in majority of cases, not interesting for your employer. Uh, involvement certificates, internship confirmation letters, it's really up to the job description. If uh, the company asks for it, you can send it. In applications, in apps, uh, in the forms, they normally ask you for a CV and cover letter, and you have only, let's say, one. Uh, um, possibility to send only one document. Uh, pay attention on the side, uh, size, and, uh, sorry, size of attachment because not every company can receive a huge uh, size of the document. And of course, bound it as a one, merge it as a one PDF. Never ever send two, uh, twenty, uh, or even two different files. So if you are ready, of course you can apply, and you should not be perfect. Your application could be authentic, uh, and uh, the way you write German or English is also authentic, but uh, it should be proofreaded with correct grammar and spelling. After you apply, don't obsess. Uh, work on the job search every day. If, if you are at the moment jobless, it's your full-time job, eight hours a day to search for a new job. But don't check your email every second. And of course, have a life. So we wish you good luck with your uh, job search and with your master thesis writing. We are done with our presentation. If you still have time, we have time for your questions, and of course, we ha could have a short discussion afterwards. So the chat is open. So I see so far applause. Guys, as I said, all information and examples we will send you as materials, documentation for the after the webinar. And of course, if you have personal questions, Try to, uh, not try, but definitely reach us. And yeah, and Ruben reminds me about feedback. We will also send it uh, via uh, brand school organizers. To, for you, we um, would like to know your opinion. Uh, you see the link in the chat. It's just a simple Google, Google form. So it's also interesting for us, your opinion. Please do it. It's a kind of our money, your, your feedback is our uh, payment, let's say like this, because yeah, all our consultations and offers are free of charge. Thank you for really active participation. Thank you for joining us, uh, joining us from different countries. Thank you for your time. And we are happy to share our experience with you personally through Willy Brandt community or via our professional emails so you can contact us anytime so I see the message link is not working but as I said we will send it again to the Willy Brand school and they could share it with you sometimes it happens So yeah, now I see Ruben again posted. So we say goodbye.
from me, from Ruben, and from Johanna. And we will be happy to hear from you and, of course, to receive your feedback in our feedback form. We will leave the chat open for a while so you can share or maybe ask any questions if you want. But for now, we say goodbye.